Yeah, Dre. <laughs> Thanks for joining me on my first trip to California. Today, we're gonna be dissecting the brand new Specialized Turbo Levo SL. Let's go. Welcome everybody. Today, we are here with Alan Cook, the quote unquote doer of things and marketing manager for the mountain bike product at Specialized. We are here in beautiful Pacifica, California and gonna be learning about this mullet or 29 inch wheeled ready new Levo SL. Alan, you had us out to a media camp last year to ride the new Levo SL. We liked it, we had fun, it was awesome. However, we then had the brakes pumped and you said, we're gonna be waiting, embargo is shifting. Tell us why that happened and what that led to with the new bike here. Yeah, I mean, as positive as things were at that point, it just kind of came down to the fact that we knew it could be better. We knew what was coming in the marketplace and rather than releasing an inferior project, it was a little bit of a go back to the drawing board and really focus on the motor um, and updating some of the spec that comes on it just so we're releasing you know, the futuristic bikes, not bikes that are going out of style you know, the day they come out. Okay, so from that point, the bike, the geo, construction of the frame, a lot of that stuff remained unchanged, but it, you were more focusing on the drive unit, power. Can you talk to us about what, what the extra time allowed you guys to do? Yeah, for sure. I mean, that is the biggest thing. That is the biggest thing that changed with that extra time was the work on the Turbo SL 1.2 motor package. Um, a lot of it went towards making the motor quieter and now has a, a two-piece motor housing. And there's some really cool, like, um, honeycomb shaped aluminum pieces on the inside of the housing that absorbs a lot of the, the sound. Um, reconfigured, Almost like a baffle. Yeah, yeah, okay. like a baffle. Huh. Um, reconfigured some of the gear shapes that just produce a little bit less sound. Um, and then also going back to the drawing board and really working on the firmware and the whole motor package to be able to get more power out of it. So now this new Levo SL 1.2 motor is 33% more power and 44% more torque. Okay, uh, which equates to 50 newton meters of torque. 50 newton meters of torque and 320 watts of power. Okay, and um, obviously that's a, definitely an increase over the outgoing Levo SL, and one that we've noticed a big difference on so far on the trail. Um, I really notice, especially like in trail mode, you know, I'm typically someone who loves to be in boost or turbo all the time, and I found that I'm a little more conscious, obviously, of battery range which we'll get into size momentarily but man I found that in trail mode this bike just zips along like it's quite fast and then I was only needing to get into turbo for the really steepest bits yeah I mean that's that's one of those functions that I really like as far as like what you're talking about if you're in a situation where there's a lot of sustained steep climbing or you're going for a three or four hour ride one of the ways you can kind of manage that power output is with the micro tune right um by being able to adjust in those 10 percent increments and just like you're saying like kind of riding around that 60 to 80 percent and then using that micro tune as a throttle rather than shifting and going slower just a little bit of power to get up and then when you get it back up to the top power back down to whatever your normal is and you're kind of just using what you need okay um and so speaking of battery 320 watt battery internal yep and then there is an optional 160 watt range extender. Um, the S-Works will come with the range extender as well as the S-Works frame, correct? Correct, yep. Okay, and right now at time of launch, only the S-Works and Pro models will be released. Yep. Oh yeah. Woo, it gets up there, huh? That's the job. Well, what do you think? You haven't ridden the old Levo. I haven't. Er, sorry, the old SL. Power? Definitely has enough to get you off the mark. Um, hasn't really been feeling like it bogs down so bad on steeper stuff. Okay. Are you using the micro tune or the presets? I've uh, played about with both. Okay. Um, definitely notable micro tune benefits, I think. Yeah. Um, yeah, just really tailoring it to the situation, I think is quite okay. nice. I've been sticking primarily to presets. I think it's quicker with the up and downs and not knowing where we are. Uh, making larger jumps between power when needed, but the micro tune has been neat. Um, I definitely am noticing an increase in power compared to the outgoing Levo SL. It seems quieter than the other Levo SL also, and I think that was a goal and I think they accomplished it. Motor, power, all that is different. Let's get into geometry and frame construction and suspension tune, right? Uh, obviously, 
It's a mullet bike right now. A lot more like the Stumpy Evo. Yep. Aggressive geo, stiffer frame build and construction. It can be switched and run with a 29 inch wheel by using the flip chip at the rear end, uh, which also I guess would hypothetically give you short and long wheelbase options. Yeah, it's about a three millimeter uh, rear end length that you gain when you go into the 29er. Most of that is just to gain clearance. Okay. Um, but then also just the nature of the flip chip, that's how it works. Okay. Uh, there's also a high low position in the shock link, which mm -hmm. is carbon fiber and looks great on the S-Works models. Yep. Um, and then of course, what's really awesome is the headset cup adjustability, which is a degree plus or minus. Mm -hmm. And the nominal position was 64.25. Correct. Okay, so obviously we're going a lot more towards the full power Levo and the Stumpy Evo with this bike. Yeah, I mean, it's like you're saying, it is just a bit of a trickle down from that Stumpy Evo that went into the Levo Gen 3. And really, if you look back at where that came from, that came directly from the racetrack and working with Loic and Finn and the S Racing team, okay. developing the 2019 demo, I think it was. And that was really when the benefits of rearward axle path kind of got yeah. discovered and how you could make those things benefit the, the nimble climbing feel, but then also having that rear wheel get out of the way and manage those big hits really well. So really this is as close to a carbon copy of the Stump Jumper Evo, which, you know, when it came out it, three years ago, I think it was, uh, was one, had won multiple uh, Bike of the Year awards. So it really was a no brainer to kind of work that uh, kinematic as well as the um, geometry packages from those bikes that have been proven and adding in all that adjustability for a couple of reasons, right? So most people are gonna set their geo and forget it, uh -huh. um, which it gives the opportunity for someone to, to really dial in their bike for their, not only type of riding, yeah. the type of trail they're riding, but the way they like to ride the bike. But then also people that wanna have that one bike that kind of does it all. Maybe you go to a bike park in Whistler, you wanna slack this thing out, drop the bottom bracket, because it doesn't matter. It really kind of gives that option for this bike to be all things. Now, speaking of, I guess, sizing, there's a pretty broad range. This is following the S sizing structure. How many different models or sizes will be available? As far as sizes available, S1 through S6. Okay. So that's gonna fit someone from about just under five foot, like a 410, 411 rider on an S1, okay. all the way up to about 6.3 to 6.5 in the S6. Okay. And uh, this is sticking with the RX tune, meaning that each different size will have different layups and frame stiffnesses as well as shock tunes. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So the RX tune comes on the shock. It actually comes on all specialized products with the suspension. And basically they're our ride dynamics team. Okay. They ride every size, they ride every configuration, and they do countless amounts of hours of dyno testing and figure out what the best tune for that range weight that they're shooting for within those different sizes. And then going to the frame sizes, you know, the biggest thing I think Specialized has kind of that stands out as amongst all the brands is the ride quality. Okay. And one of the ways that we're able to achieve that ride quality through all of the sizes is the engineers, you know, each one of these frames is completely different through the sizes, S1 through S6. Not just the, the size of them. And a lot of times people or brands will be like, okay, well, it's bigger, it's a heavier rider, put more carbon on it, make it stiffer. But there's a very specific ride characteristic and feedback that is engineered into these bikes. And we want riders from size S1 to S6 to be able to experience that. And the way they manage that is all the different, uh, is not just with layup, but it's also with tube shapes. So if you look closely at all the different sizes, the tubes are actually shaped different. They're completely different developed frames. It's pretty impressive. Wow, very cool. How are you feeling about geo and suspension on the climb? Yeah, I mean, I'm definitely at the taller end of the spectrum for somebody who should be riding this size of bike. Yep. Um, so it's always going to have its work cut out, especially I've got longer legs too. But up at my saddle height, I think the position, like seated position is a little bit more rearward than I would like it to be. Okay. Uh, definitely finding myself sat on the nose of the saddle a little bit more. Okay. But You're 6'2". Two 6'2". Two. On an S4. Yeah. S5 would probably get you a little more evenly distributed probably. I think okay. so. Okay. Um, How about you? Yeah, all in all, I think uh, the Geo feels pretty balanced. I mean, these are obviously some real tight switchbacks yeah. um, and we don't really know where we're going, but I feel like I can get up, might play, you know, with dropping that, that stem five mil, uh, get a little more weight on the front end. And obviously depending on the type of terrain that you regularly ride, we could steepen that head tube angle a full degree or half a degree yeah. and that might help. 
So along with being 29 inch wheel ready, I should say, and coming with the 27.5 via that flip chip in the back, we've got an adjustable chip here in the link, which is a high or low chip essentially, and does about five millimeters up yeah. and down. Yeah, so there's a flip chip there in the shock extension and it's plus or minus five millimeters of BB height. So it just allows you to further adjust that bike, your lower center gravity. Maybe you, you know, you really want it low and you can shorten some cranks or whatever you might do. It just really, this bike is, is capable of adapting to any rider style on any type of train. That's really what it's built for. Okay. And then obviously with the adjustable headset cups, that only increases the adaptability for different riders, different sizes and terrain. Um, Geometry on this as a whole, um, you know, we'll post up the numbers, going to change and vary by size, but very similar to the Stumpy Evo. Yeah, as close to a carbon copy of that as possible. I think like, like an S3 versus S3, like a comparison, I think it's only a couple millimeters in the rear end length that's different. So I'm riding an S4, which is usually my preferred size uh, in the S sizing structure, and it has a 470 millimeter reach, uh, which I like, I'm, I'm right happy in that zone. So. Yeah, that would be equivalent if you were on like t-shirt sizes like another brand might have, small, medium, large, that would be equivalent to a large. Right, okay. Talking about the S-Works and Pro specs, what were goals? Obviously S-Works is, you know, no holds barred. What did that mean for you guys when you're coming to pick spec and parts for this? I mean, when it's S-Works, yeah, like you said, it's no holds barred. It's creating your dream bike, basically. Okay. Um, one of the things that was a benefit, actually, of how long it took this bike to be ready to come out was being able to put on the new SRAM drivetrains. Just, I think that adds to this complete package in the riding experience with how well the shifting is under load. Being on an e-bike, it's, it's a no-brainer. It's just so smooth and so consistent and when when you want it to as well as the brakes the the stealth brakes i mean they look amazing they work amazing and i think it was definitely a key to waiting as long as we did to release this getting these parts on this bike Woo! oh man what a day yeah, man. so far we have had a lot of fun on this bike robert what stands out for you it just it loves to party it loves to pop and play it's uh Real nice and stiff and stout. So when you're pushing her into turns, you're plowing through rock gardens, it just feels reassuringly stiff and sturdy, right? Yep, yep. Yeah, I think I didn't have like that instant love moment like I've had with all the other Levos I've hopped on, the full power Levos. And I think we made some suspension tunes last night, did a little bit of tweaking, and the bike has come alive for me today. And it is a lot of fun. I'm excited to take this thing home and put a lot of miles on it. For me, uh, some of the big standouts have been overall composure and capability of the bike. Thinking to the old Levo SL, uh, some of the rock and downhill trails that we've hit today were pretty gnarly. And that old Lisa, Levo SL, it would have it been a little more timid. And we're not even running this thing in the slackest mode possible. The frame is noticeably stiffer. The suspension is I don't want to say stiffer in a bad way, but it's just more capable um, and willing to charge the 36 up front solid. Overall, a, a great platform and the power is noticeable. Like we are definitely getting uh, a bit more push and assistance while we're getting up these steep climbs. So Absolutely. do you feel like you're on a e-bike when you're riding this thing down? When, no, I don't. That's a big takeaway for me, for yeah. sure. Like when, crazy. when it comes time to drop into a trail or jump or play or move, I. I'm not really feeling the e-bike vibe on this thing. Not it's, at all. It is uh, an awesome compliment for sure. But um, thanks to Specialized for having us out and, and getting a chance to ride this thing before it comes out. Thanks to you guys, obviously, for watching. Please reach out with any questions. Uh, we'll be happy to address them. And of course, stay tuned. Please subscribe to the channel if you don't, because we're going to be putting a lot of miles under this thing and uh, coming back to you with a long-term test in the future. Thanks again, and we'll see you out on the trails.